we're going to do a transverse view of the palmar aspect of the wrist so that we can evaluate the median nerve. We'll place the probe. Again, notch will be facing towards the patient's right-hand side, and consequently, that will be appearing, the right side will appear on the left side of the screen. First, we will identify some of the bony landmarks. Screen right will be the pisiform. This pulsating structure is the ulnar artery, and right next to it, right here, is the ulnar nerve. This is the flexor retinaculum, and here is the median nerve. And if we continue over, we'll see the tubercle of the scaphoid here. By tilting the probe, toggling the probe, we'll see that the tendons, and I'm going to increase the gain a little bit and drop the focal zone down into that region a little better so we can better visualize that. As we tilt the probe, we'll see that the tendons become bright and dark, whereas the nerve remains relatively the same. Although the nerve is also somewhat anisotropic, it is not nearly as anisotropic as the tendons, meaning that when I tilt the probes, the tendons will flash bright and dark whereas the nerve will stay relatively the same, and that's one trick to help you in identifying the median nerve. From the short axis view of the nerve, we're going to rotate the probe 90 degrees to view the nerve in its long axis. Here's the nerve, and I'm going to slowly rotate the probe in an attempt to elongate that structure. The nerve will usually appear hypoechoic relative to the tendons, and if you have the patient bend their finger slowly, you'll see that the tendons move in relationship to the nerve. They move much greater than the nerve moves. We're going to look at just a couple of the very important regions in the dorsum of the wrist. The first one we're going to look at is where decorvanes occurs in the first tunnel of the wrist. So we'll turn his wrist this way and we're going to look in the first compartment at the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus tendons. Over the distal aspect of the radius, we'll see the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus tendons. Sometimes we'll see a septum between the two tendons. These are the tendons and there's the bone surface here. Now I'm going to turn the probe 90 degrees to look at the tendons in their long axis. And we can follow those tendons distally towards their insertions. And proximally towards the myotendinous junction, both in long and short axis. Briefly, we will review the other tunnels of the wrist. And again, these tendons can be followed all the way from their muscular tendinous junctions and should be followed from their muscular tendinous junctions to their insertions to fully evaluate them. We'll move from the radial side to the ulnar side of the wrist and look at the rest of the tunnels briefly. The extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, and next to it is Lister's tubercle. On the ulnar side of Lister's tubercle is the extensor pollicis longus. If you would extend your thumb backwards, please, we can actually see the movement in that area. That's good. And then back and forth with the thumb, please. There we go. And then relax. Here we see Lister's tubercle. And as we move further ulnar, we'll see the finger extensor tendons here. And yet further, we'll move over to our final tunnel, the sixth tunnel, the extensor carpi ulnaris.